today uh, we're shooting on a, a maize stubble. Um, we're protecting the maize next door to us, which hasn't been harvested yet. The pigeons have been dropping in on that and it's just ideal really. We can drop the pigeons out here and pick them, so dropping them in the stand and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the reason we're here today. There's a couple of flight lines come through here. As one goes along the top of the ridge, because we're at the bottom of the ridge. There's another one goes right along the bottom where that pigeon's going now. But there's houses down the bottom there. We can't really set up down there. We don't annoy the neighbours. They're fine with it anyway. But um, So this is the next best place, this clump of trees. As you saw when we turned up, there was quite a lot of pigeons in it. Um, so they do make for this little clump of uh, trees here. So the plan today is to put a rotary down here on the left hand side to hopefully get them to curl around because the way the wind is, it's coming in on our left shoulder here. Um, not ideal, but there's not much wind anyway, could have done with a bit more. Um, and we're going to put another rotary up there to try and pull them around and just have the pattern out in front of us. Andy has set his hide in the hedgerow between the maize crop and the stubble field. It is alongside a stand of trees and close to a well used flight line. Andy uses a simple pattern with a whirly on either flank to provide some eye catching movement and two clusters of decoys with a gap between them for the pigeons to land in. This was made, made for me by uh, Mark Gilchrist. He rang me up and he said, uh, do you want me to make you a net crow? And I said, cool, yeah, it'd be nice. And I said, what does it look like? And I thought, well, I wonder what it does look like. And when he was making it, it looked too light. But as you can see, it just, and what it's made out, he's got an old camouflage net at the back and he's bought uh, three ghillie suits, undone all these ghillie suits and just tied it on for me. It took him weeks to make it. When I first got it, I thought, I wasn't so sure about it, but I just love it now. I just chuck down the rucksack, screws up, it's lovely. Instead of taking three nets to make a hide, just put that up, it's brilliant. And you, you think it's too light, but everywhere I've used it, it's like now it blends in lovely. I could just put a few branches on it. But once you start putting branches off the trees, it starts to show up more. So, but yeah, I really love it. The reason I'll stop now, um, fresh birds, uh, we bought some old birds with us that we shot the other day, they're a bit drab, it was raining so they're, they're not looking so good, so we just put out some fresh ones, uh, nice fresh birds, uh, put these out just to add to the pattern so there's a bit more to look at, so they commit a bit better, but some of them have they committed really well, and um, we're still out here now and there's a couple trying to come in, but yeah they're committing quite well, they're coming through here, the wind, what wind there is is coming across the field into our face, which isn't ideal, but they're coming round and they're coming through this gap, which is quite nice. So, but yeah, we should get a few more out and just build the pattern up, really. You can see they, they were on the maze here when we got here. Um, they've obviously, because we pushed them off, uh, they've gone and they, this one's got a bit of rape in it. A um, bit of rape, bit of white clover. This one's got chestnut, white clover, acorns. Uh, I think this one had acorns in it. No, that's just maize and white clover and a bit of uh, rape. This one's got a couple of chestnuts, um, acorns, a bit of white clover and, and maize. You see the maize that's in there. Uh, uh, the, the, the they've obviously had a feed here this morning. We've turned up um, and pushed them off, and uh, they what? Well, they obviously come back in the end because they got shot. But, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. So and, but, and, and uh, how did it go then today compared to your expectations? Conditions not ideal. Conditions weren't ideal. Um, we shot okay. We missed some stuff that we shouldn't have missed. Shot some longer stuff. Um, but yeah, but. White it goes and it can't kill everything. No. And we've, we've got about 70, 80 birds? Yeah, about that, I think. Yeah, yeah, at least that, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was hoping for 120, 100 to 120, but 
the way it goes. There was no wind, but there was, a, there was a little bit of breeze and they were just skimming between here. It was lovely, they were just coming straight in. They, they decoyed quite well, which was nice. Um, yeah, I think that was a problem. They was getting on top of us before we could get on them. Um, you were shooting but, quite open chokes today. Yeah, I was for that, for that reason, because they was coming in quite close. So. Just didn't want to blow them to pieces, hit them too hard, but no. No, it worked out really well. Uh, and you said that uh, there's a lot of food here, so even when they cultivate this and, and, and yeah, well, crop. Yeah, when they harvest it, they, like, like I said to you earlier, they, they knocked a lot of a lot of the cobs off. Um, but like, like they'll be harvesting that bit probably tomorrow. And that was our aim today, to keep them off of here. Um, I would have been here earlier, but we just couldn't get here because the ground was so wet getting here. We've managed to borrow a buggy today to get here, but even then, walking, it's it's quite a long way. It's about a mile and a half to walk, so um, that's why we haven't been here before. And plus, you wanted to come and film, so today was the first dry day that we could get here. So, as the sun dips, we leave Andy to load up the last of the gear and take the shot birds back to the chiller. It's been a successful outing, but with plenty of pigeons still about, one thing is certain: he'll be back. <laughs>